My wife would kill me for saying this, Doctor, but I don't think Kate is the right woman for you. But Miss Hartman speaks so highly of her. I know, but you are my friend, and I only say this as counsel to a friend. Kate can be, well, difficult. Difficult women I can handle, Reverend. But I have heard rumors. Running around. I was just giving the good doctor some advice. I'm so sorry. It seems my niece is running behind. Yeah, we expected her to be here by now. Yes, Curtis. That's what I'm saying. I should be going. No, don't go. I'll follow him. Out. All right. Uh, that might be her right now. Will you be a dear and go check? <laughs> to clothe the fiery thought in simple words succeeds. For still the craft of genius is to mask a king in weeds. <laughs> You're faster than you look, Miss Thompson. Ah. Sorry. I mean, Kate. Well, I can be slow, too, if that's what you want. Who knows? Maybe I'll let you take me out on a midnight stroll one of these evenings. How about tomorrow night? Oh, why are you asking me out on the date, Henry Adams? I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, Aunt Sarah. You promised me that you'd be here, Kate. What? Well, first I made excuses, and then I made Kate. Oh, doctor. You know, it's hard enough for me to entertain with the house like this. The house is fine. But then, to lie for you on top of that. OK, Aunt Sarah, you're doing a wonderful job. The house looks splendid. S splendid. Oh, I'm so glad that it's up to your standards. Because you know what? If this isn't working out for you, there are other options. Of course not. A greasy traveler's in at the edge of town, perhaps. No. I mean, and who were you with? I know that I heard two voices. It was just me, all right? All by myself. You're not in New York anymore, Kate. Voices travel here. I can hear. I have ears. I hear the idle chat about you behind my Sarah. back. Sarah! You were a fine hostess, the doctor had a good time, and bless him, he's gone. Now can we all just enjoy this delicious cake you made? Sarah, I, I feel you were a little harsh with me. Today, today I'm going to speak to you about temptation. If we are to stand in triumph over temptation, we have to, we have to stand among them, brothers and sisters of Winesburg. How... Where is the line between temptation and sin? confront them head on. We have to confront our ungodly desires head on and stand among them with our heads held upwards and say, Lord, show me the way. Breakfast is ready. Okay. Could you help me with this? Just put the one part in the other part. That's not it, okay? I'm afraid, Uncle. I'm afraid? All of my other friends, the other teachers, 
think that I should at least meet him. The doctor. Yes. And the single ones say no. But I just know that that means they want him all to themselves. You wouldn't have liked him. He smelled like formaldehyde. <laughs> Um, can I confess something to you? After church. No. Right here. Right now. Please. Yesterday, I told Aunt Sarah that I was alone. But I was not alone, Uncle. I know. Oh. Sin, sin begins in the heart. We have to, um, mm. we have to recognize it and, and turn away. How do you do it? How do you resist the temptation? I look, um, I look ever to Jesus. And he carries me through. Thank you, Miss Thompson. Kate. <laughs> Kate. You sure have grown a lot since you were in my class. <sighs> Let me teach you something new. Good heavens. Henry Adams. What are you doing? Reverend, I... Uh, we were just, um... Reverend, I never... Go home, Henry. Go home now. Please don't tell my parents, sir. Now. You're lucky I found you when I did. Before I went any further. What would the other teachers say if you were caught seducing an innocent boy? What would Jesus say if he found out that one of his own reverends was a peeping Tom? Maybe I should just stop bathing with my door open. I... I can't stop. Going for a swim. Would you like to watch?
Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and